In this video, we'll continue on with a point of sale system, and now we're going to focus on part 19. So before I even continue on, I noticed a mistake, or not really a mistake, something we didn't cover yet. So we have this here, this all works, but if I clear it out, you could see this suddenly maintained. And if we do this and clear it out, we get this error. So I know that I didn't cover this yet. So this was the one because they're all linked together and I apparently didn't notice about this one. So let's solve this first and then we're going to focus on the total amount. So to do this or how to solve the clear button, we first need to know where is the clear button function connected. Click on this and then we're going to search for the function name, which is the order basket clear. All right. So in here, I'm going to search for this specific item, order basket clear. And then here again, this is the function and the only issue here what we probably have is a very tiny one is just to reset the length to zero. So we say here uh, order item quantity that was the new array that we have set up. We say dot length equals zero. So if we do this, we'll save this and then refresh. You see here if we clear out, still doesn't work. Why we need to do something more here? So what we need to do is in the total items. Uh, let's search for that specific item as well. Here, what is the ID? The total items, because we need to reassign here a value. We're going to go here, total items, total items. That's the ID, but also the function has the same name. So that saves us some time. All right, so we're in here. And here we have this nice trick. And I thought we could use without the else, but we will be needing the else. And the reason why we need else is if we have a length of none or if there's no length in that case what do we want to do because then our array equals zero all right so we, that's basically what we say here so i'll just show you what i'm talking about here if i say console log dot uh, console log dot uh, the array and then dot length save this refresh click on this all right go to console log here and then if i clear out you can see here it becomes zero basically a length of none there's no length here so what we can do here is just this. If there is a length, it will do this. If there's no length, it was doing nothing. That's the reason why it was keeping this here. It doesn't do anything. So all we have to do here is we then have to reassign this one and just say now that this will be equal by default always to zero. Save that. Refresh. Click, click, click. Clear. There you are. You can test it also with drinks. Are we having everything connected well? Here. And then we clear there we are so this works very nice we have this here i don't know yet what this is but this might need to be solved as well eventually but that's all right for now so what we're going to do now is focus on the total item we just get that one and then we'll see if something is missing because later on i have still one item that will be a big one that we have to do anyway what i want to do now is the total amount and this is very important remember when we select these these are correlated with each other yes you can see here zero is uh, 14 and i don't know exactly what is 14 right now on oh, 14 is the id sorry that's the id and then this is the index number basically here but if we select here do we see anything here we do see it here but i guess we don't see it anymore there we click on that all right you will see here probably something what we really need is this because that's my whole point here we have the array item, basically the ID, we have the value of the item, and then we have also the quantity of the item. And this is very important because the quantity of the item will be matched with the price. So we need to do this, multiply by this, and then plus not this one, multiply by that, plus this, multiply by that, plus this, multiply by that. All right, so that will, that's what we need to do. And you might say, well, if we click twice on this, why is this still not calculating? Well, that's why we need the complicated item. That is the IDs that we're going to work on, but everything is so connected right now, I don't want to cover it yet. So what I want to do here, at least is that we calculate these and multiply them correctly. To do this, what we need to do is we need to figure out where exactly we have to do this. And well, you guessed it already. We can look here quickly in the ID here. You have here the ID. Uh, let's search for this ID here. Is there an ID? There you are. The ID of span which is the total cost, probably the function is also called total cost, but let's check. We have here the total cost, all right. I guess this is the entire function. It's not called total cost, but it's called total the cost of items. All right, 
So what we're going to do in here, here we already have like a, uh, what we call this, the reduce item. So we see here the value reduce. It reduces the item or basically the reduce, array reduce is the sum. That's the previous video I explained as well. We sum them all together. Now what we need to do is we need to multiply them one by one and, relem oh, sorry, and remember they were correlated. This one was this with the IDs. So then we can get the price with the quantity of that specific item and then multiply them together. This is very, very important. So what we're going to do here is basically the following. We're going to create here a, uh, let's create here something simple, a simple temporary array. And the reason I'm going to create a temporary array is just for the multiplying here to calculate these multipliers together. So we say a constant, and we call this the total temp array. This will be only used in here. And in here, what we're going to do is the following. We're going to say here, how are we going to calculate? Well, we're going to grab the uh, order item quantity matching with the price. So we have the price, order price array, which indicates the price and the quantity indicates how many items we have of that specific item with that price. Very important here. So we have this one here, and then what we're going to do here, then we say here, order item quantity dot map. And this is a functionality that is very good because basically with the map, it will loop through every item and, a multiple, and then we can do whatever we want. We want in our case, multiply by the price. So that's what we're going to do here. So this is a very useful one. Remember this one. Then we say here, all right. So basically how this really works is the map. And then we have to specify here the value. And the value would be here the quantity. So in essence, what we're saying here, this is just this. Every item, every value in here, let's say number two right now, one and one. That's the array. So if you would draw it in an array, you will see this, two, comma, one, comma, one. So we say this quantity array quantity or sorry order item quantity dot map then we say quantity and the quantity refers to this item here then we'll loop through the first one and then the next one and then the next one so basically index however it's it grabs just the value of it but we also want to grab the index and the reason why we want to grab the index is because the price is also nicely matched in the same array structure these two are correlated with each other because the price would be the first price of the index would be then 699, other one would be 599, etc., etc. So this, the other one is 599, and then the other one is 499. So these are so directly correlated. So this is basically index 0, index 1, index 2. That's why you have the index here, and this is just matching as well. So then we say here, arrow expression function, and then we make here a, uh, basically this is a function, and then we say the following. What we want to do here is, we want to, uh, let's see, what we need to do here is the following. Uh, let me double check here. All right. So we have here that we're going to push. What we want to do is we push, basically in this array, the total price here. We say dot push. But what exactly are we pushing? We're pushing the quantity. And just to make sure you understand what I'm saying here is I want just to console log this. Let's show you first this, so that makes more sense. Then you will understand what I'm talking about and why it's so powerful. Let me say your index. If I save this right now, and this is the sum array and cost items. All right. I don't know how it will be triggered. Let's click on this, or maybe if I click on something here. All right, and nothing is being triggered. All right, fair enough. So if it doesn't be, if it doesn't trigger. Uh, in that case, all right, so be it. So what we're going to do is the following. Then. It's very, very straightforward. We have these two, because basically it's these, these uh, are these items here. We want to push this, and they would say just all, but the way we push it, we do the following. We grab this here, the quantity multiply by because this is the value, remember that, uh, and then multiply by the order price array, but then here index. All right, so then you have the index, we'll match it all together. So then we have this, this will be pushed every time in here, and then what we want to do, we want to do this specific item here, we reduce it. Since we already have 
this part already done nicely what i want to do here then is just to we're going to remove this because you already get this now i'm going to cut this out and replace it up so we get the array first here and then here this is not anybody order price array no it's a temporary the total temporary price or whatever you want to call that the total price here will be reduced here and we put it in here so once we did this this functionality here can be probably removed because we have the sum array here oh, oh no sorry this can be still maintained we still maintain this the only thing we say different array now we grab this array so we save this now refresh we should have now the expected item all right it doesn't work yet why well let's see i guess probably i know why you can see it it works here once it moves away so probably if you remember my previous video it was saying here the cost item needs to be triggered so i'm going to copy this so what we need to do is we need to trigger this not here only if it's equals to zero but we also need to trigger it here up when the cost item is here all right so if i save this now refresh click 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 plus there you are page engineer plus 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 if i click more there you are remove one remove one remove this price remove seven dollars should be removed there we are and then here goes down goes down goes down there we are so we go there increase decrease so this works nice let's see if i clear out this works as well so now we have everything here and let's make sure if we do this if i check out we get the same price that is equal to this here insert paid amount if i say exact amount all right we see everything is now nicely matched so this is basically how we do it and now probably it's time for the most complicated one is to start to get this what i really want to do and that will be next video is when you click on twice on pizza one it should be here in here instead of being separated it should be together recognize it as a plus instead of a new item that will be in the next video